So guys, we are back with another Lords of the Fallen video and today guys, we have a brand new update patch for the game version 1.1.310 November 9th. Let's go. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So let's get into it guys and do some great, great changes and additions added in with this update. Okay, so all platforms. Greeting lamp bearers. Earlier this week, we released a 2023 free content roadmap. Guys, you'll see this on screen now. Showcasing the ongoing optimizations and enhancements we'll be making to Lords of the Fallen, as well as the updates based on community feedback that we will be dropping in the upcoming months. Today's weekly update introduces over 100 significant tweaks and improvements across the board. Alongside this, it also includes the first inventory expansion pass, a full revamp for the Sundered Monarch boss encounter, online functionality for the Steam Deck, further HDR improvements, and we're also very pleased to confirm key quest items will no longer be affected by inventory limitations. As requested by some of you, we also added the option to hide damage numbers on the hood for a more immersive experience. By popular demand, while it wasn't included on the initial roadmap released, we're happy to announce work has begun to allow to re-customize your character's appearance in game. Which, that's an amazing change, I made so many mistakes in my character. Currently scheduled to release this side of the new year. This feature will come with its own mini quest to unlock it, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's dive into the update they state. Inventory. Previously, unique items couldn't be picked up when the inventory was full. Now, key and quest items and unique items will be picked up even if the inventory is full, exceeding the inventory limit as necessary. This applies to key spells, quest items, ammo types, gestures, etc. This change could also resolve any potential issues with quest lines where a required item couldn't be picked up due to an inventory full message. Additionally, starting from patch 1.1.310, if the inventory is full, the item will drop to the ground so they can be picked up later. Please note that the stash expansion is still in progress and will be available later this year. Okay, so on to HDR. HDR has been further tweaked to provide an even wider range of colors. Steam Deck. Online functionality is now fully operational on Steam Deck. Steam Deck no longer crashes when the Scarlet Shadow spawns, so it's back on Steam Deck. Valve driver should automatically update when you start the game. Stability. Fixed a crash that could occur when accessing the Shrine of Arias when switching to offline mode. Fixed a crash that could occur when quitting to the main menu while being in a multiplayer session. Fixed a blocker that could prevent players from finishing the game with the Umbral ending. Okay, so on to performance. Optimize certain actors in the game to increase performance in several areas. Optimize performance in Skyverse by reducing cast shadows without reducing visual quality. Optimize performance in Upper Cover of Marketplace Square by reducing cast shadows without reducing visual quality. Optimize performance in Castle Bramis while being in Umbral. Optimize performance uh, in the Mans area by reducing cast shadows without reducing visual quality quality. Optimize performance in Red Corpse Church by reducing cast shadows without reducing visual quality. And I've done the same here guys for when the uh, Wither Entity spawns in as well as within Lower Calrath and I've also optimized collision meshes in Lower Calrath, uh, bridge area to reduce collision counts and increase performance. Okay so on to PvP. Fix an issue with fog walls that would allow players to leave a Crimson Ritual area. Added music to Crimson Rituals to increase tension in PvP. Improved the UI for finishing Crimson Rituals. Added additional descriptions for failed connections for Crimson Rituals. Okay, so on to Revenge. Improve the UI for finishing Revenges. That's it. Okay, so balancing. PvE focused here. Stomping on Drowners. Hounds and Sparrows now instantly kills them. Pretty cool. Braided Ring. Summoned allies can use more ranged attacks before disappearing. The ring used to add a plus 5 now adds plus 10 with this change. Pretty cool. 
the pendant of a trophy. Uh, umbral sorceries can be cast with insufficient mana, but at the cost of wither damage. Equipping this amulet now also reduces your wither health regain rate when you deal damage. Withered health costs increased. Umbral Eye of a Loche. While charging a heavy attack, all damage is received as wither damage and your posture cannot be broken. Pretty cool. Equipping this eyeball now also reduces your wither health regen rate when you deal damage. Umbral Eye of a Lady of the Non Witch. Use ranged weapons without ammunition but at the cost of withered health. Equipping this amulet now also reduces your wither health regain rate when you deal damage. Hurt reactions sometimes triggered in the wrong direction. This is now fixed. Okay, so now on to bosses. Now the trio in the dark spot waits more diligently for the player to be at the exact arena space before triggering the whole combat. The Sundered Monarch boss encounter has received a full revamp and as a result is more challenging. Pretty cool. They state this has been achieved without tweaking his HP or damage output. Pure behavioral upgrade they say it's tougher. Improve the hitboxes of the following bosses to better support throwable weapons. Delvler, the Sundered Monarch, Light Reaper, Cleric, Hush Saint, Runehold, and the Spurn Progeny. Pretty cool. Enhance the combat camera behavior to prevent uh, locking down when being close to a target. Light Reaper could sometimes get out of bounds in one of the encounters, leading to him leaving the fight. Adjusted the trigger areas for the skin stealer boss to prevent the player from hitting him from a distance without his reaction. Okay, so now on to AI. VF of the Chill Curse. Adjusted and added leashing volumes. Mance of the Hollow Brothers received additional leashing volumes and added new ones. Added leashing volumes for all enemies at the cistern. Also adjusted two triggers to account for edge cases in which enemies will be unresponsive if you traverse their level backward. Improved nav mesh and collisions of the Forsaken Fen where the fallen tree is. Changed nav link position for better navigation going down uh, one of the platforms of Pilgrim's Perch. Added nav modifier volumes to avoid the AI from taking a dangerous path and getting stuck in the cellar of the manse. Added nav modifier volumes to prevent umbral enemies from getting stuck with collisions in the cellar of the manse of the hollowed brothers. Added additional AI blocking volumes at red scope to avoid umbral enemies spawning above dangerous collisions. We want our AIs to be safe or they might resort to their syndicate against our level designers. Tower of Penance adjusted and added leashing volumes. The Skyrest Bridge adjusted and added leashing volumes. Adjusted spawning boxes for the enemy encounter before the Lamp Hunter area of Fitzroy's Forge. Applying wither damage to the Fortuna Tricks enemies that sometimes did not cause them to trigger aggro on the player. Now they always react properly. Further refinement of leashing volumes in Upper Calruff's Big Plaza Encounter. Adjusted and added leashing volumes at the Skyrest Bridge. Adjusted and added leashing volumes at the Pilgrim's Perch Upper Area. Added leashing volumes for all enemies at the Imperium. Adjusted and added leashing volumes at the Abbey of the Hallowed Sisters. Adjusted and added leashing volumes in Bromis Castle. A new leashing pass on different enemies and encounters in Lower Calruff. New leashing pass on different enemies and encounters at Fitzroy's Gorge. The chaser could use some floating nav mesh at Red Scott Village. Nav mesh has been cleaned. Second pass on leashing volumes for Red's Corpse, uh, Pilgrim's Perch, Forsaken Fen, Fear for the Chill, Curse, Tower Penance, and Brahmi's Castle. Mance of the Hollowed Brothers had a new leashing pass on different enemies and encounters. Payetta now plays her upgraded uh, Sanguinarix animation with better alignment regardless of the action the player was doing before interacting. Corrected a nav mesh on Upper Calruff for improved AI navigation. Okay, so now we move on to Umbro. Tweak the distance of the Soul Flay versus the UI icon. In some cases, the interaction icon appeared, but the Soul Flay was not triggering the desired effect. Now they match in all cases. Fix offsetted particles that could sometimes occur on soul flayable umbral bellies containers. Fix offsetted particles that could sometimes occur 
and sold flayable doors. Fixed a bug in which the XCM items would sometimes fall through the umbral ground under certain conditions while transitioning, making them only pickable in Axiom. Okay, so on screen now guys, you're seeing the level design, not much has changed here to be honest. And then you will go on to see collisions and there's a whole heap of things there, which is just absolutely crazy. If you want to read through these guys, you can just pause the video. There's a few more things in regards to lighting as well. Nothing major in regards to most what players will experience. But hey, if you want to read through these two, you can also pause the video. And then we have cinematics, UI and then audio. Again, guys, if you want to pause the video and read through these, I mean... I don't really think most people even notice any of these changes, but hey, they have to fix what they have to fix and they have to change what they have to change, guys. But there we have it. This is the update version 1.1.310 for Lords of the Fallen. Not gonna lie, guys, they do a great, great job in keeping up to date and keeping on top of the problems the game might have. Way, way, way better than some of the devs out there I am seeing. I'm not gonna lie. But again guys, this is version 1.1.310 for Lords of the Fallen. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like it really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.